2,300 library workers of Toronto Public Library. I want to touch on several issues today, the first of which is listening to Toronto. Word on the Street, a national book and literacy fair, took place on Sunday, September 22nd. This year, the library workers had a photo booth, and members of the public were invited to have their picture taken with a pair of librarian glasses on to show their support for the library workers and the library service. The booth was busy the entire day, and there were long lines to get our pictures taken. We also had over 50 authors from the Writers' Union of Canada attend in support. A very special guest, Premier Kathleen Wynne, joined us at our booth to lend her support as well, and she drew one of our free draw prizes for a bag of Canadian children's books. We had an amazing turnout in the council chamber at City Hall on Sunday, November 4th, 24th, sorry, for our first library budget forum sponsored by the library workers. Over 400 Torontonians gave up their Sunday afternoon to talk about the library budget, and they are concerned. The public often asks if we are still in a crisis. No, not the crisis of the 2012 budget, where we were facing a minus 10% cut with the threat of the closure of 30 branches, 20,000 service hours, and the loss of staff. Today, we are in a different kind of crisis, a crisis that has been mounting for 20 years. The Canadian Centre for Policy Alternatives reports Great Equalizer, the case for investing in the Toronto Public Library, documents how the Toronto Public Library system has been really under years of cuts to staffing, operating, capital, and acquisitions budgets. To note, the operating budget of Toronto's libraries were cut from 166 million to 129 million in 1997, realized in 2002 dollars. The report goes on to state, by 2010, the library had come within $7 million of its 1992 levels of funding. It wasn't sufficient to serve the larger populations and increased operating requirements, but it appeared that, at long last, the Toronto Public Library was back on the right track. But in 2010-11, the politics of gravy trains and tax cuts plunged the Toronto Public Library back into a crisis. All of this was done against the backdrop of the Toronto Public Library system being the busiest library system in North America and often the world. Our funding lags far behind our city counterparts. The library budget has decreased relative to other city agency boards and commissions. In a report by Enid Slack and Richard Bird from the U of T Monk School entitled Merging Municipalities, Is Bigger Better? It shows that of four city services under study, fire, solid waste, parks and recreation, and library, the library was the only service cut since amalgamation. I will also point out to you since amalgamation, the share of the library's budget moved from 2.1% to 1.9%. The localism support of a 1.2% budget increase was inclusive of funding of two new branches. The local is also in support of the city manager's recommendation not to fund the new service enhancements. Thank you. Questions, Councillor Doucette. Could you just explain to me what the, your concern is with these spend calls, which are being um, a couple concerns, really. Most and uh, foremost is that they are not uh, providing a library service. All they are providing is access to a facility. So there will be no access to our collections, no access to our staff to provide services, no access to our uh, computer technology. And they will be run by contracted out study guards, so we're concerned about health and safety issues both for the, uh, um, the members of the public attending. And most critically, which something uh, you yourself pointed out uh, very eloquently, Councillor Doucette, is the people that we serve who are of the greatest need uh, will not be able to have access to any service to, uh, during study hall. Would you imagine that we'd have to hire extra, well, we, I call security guards, I guess, to open and close the branch? Because you can't just have one person and you don't know how many people are showing up. So do you understand we could be saying that? I would uh, think so. It's very unclear at this point what the library's view is. As Mr. Fodder said this morning, it's a pilot project and absolutely no, deal, no details have been provided about how these would uh, be up and running. And the other enhancement, could you give me two seconds on what you think about the other enhancement? Well, the other enhancement is to restore service hours on Monday and Friday, mor uh, Monday mornings and Friday evenings. And the library workers certainly uh, welcome that. In the 1990s, all those hours were cut from the library service, and uh, they've been looking to be slowly uh, restored. Unfortunately, they're being restored with no staff. In the 90s, they were cut 
um, and the large staff cut uh, followed that. Thanks very much. Could you, Councillor Vaughn, remind me which ward lost the library? Uh, that, was, uh, that would be uh, your ward, Councillor Vaughn, the Urban Affairs Library That's closed. That's the Kings Valley neighborhood. Yes, it is. Are you part of the study currently underway, the social service study underway in that ward? I uh, don't. No. Uh, personally, I'm not. Did you have heard the figure that in 2001 there were 230 people who lived in that neighborhood? 2011, there are now 3,610. But by the end of this term, uh, so by, 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 the, by the end of 2020, there'll be 18,000 people in that neighborhood. You know that the number one thing they need now is a library. Uh, yes, and I understand that the Fort York uh, branch will be opening down there, which was approved prior to the current administration. You, but that was a view. But that, but that, yeah, it was last term. Last term, but that was for a new neighborhood of 18,000 people in that community. In other words, there's, there's sort of a, there's sort of a, a synergy here. You need about 18,000 people in the vicinity of a library for it to function as a neighborhood library. How do we get? Have they even talked to you about how we get the library restored in the entertainment district? Uh, no, they haven't. And obviously, what we need is a, a council administration that is concerned about city building, uh, that looks at these types of issues and finds ways that we can uh, get that done. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Mr. Riley, given the mandate of the public libraries to provide uh, public service to the people of Toronto, how do you feel the study hall meets that demand? Well, I don't think it does provide a public service, Councilor Leon, because there is no library staff to provide library service. It's just a uh, contracted out um, 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 security guard, and there's no access to our collections or programs or et cetera. We heard that earlier this morning in the presentation, but by providing access to our buildings, is that not meeting the public service demand of the mandate of the library? Uh, no, it's not. A library is more than a building. Uh, we did an analysis of our over 50,000 uh, person uh, supporter database, and they said to us uh, an integral part of some library service is the staff which provides that service. So it's the total service that you're referring to that, that would make the library service compatible. Absolutely, we're a service industry, not a widget factory. So, absolutely, the staff are very, very important. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, moving at the committee, no questions. Thank you very much, Maureen.